Well, good morning. It's Crafting on a Budget, and for today's tutorial, we're going to be altering a calendar block. And I purchased this at Hobby Lobby. It was twelve dollars, and I paid actually six dollars because everything's fifty percent off right now. And I really don't care for the red. I want something more farmhouse, and I also want something that I can keep all year round. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some black chalk paint and I'm going to paint it and just give it a different look just a little something different um, that way if I want to use it for Halloween I think black can go for Halloween or I know I made that other one and I still have it but if I wanted to use it for any other holiday I can and so we're just going to paint it and I'm not going to decorate it per se like um, put anything fancy on it because remember I want to keep it for all year round. Now what I'm going to use for the base is a um, candlestick and I'll show you that here. There's the candlestick and I'm just going to keep it really simple. It's nothing major and of course I could probably uh, with my Cricut I could type out or print out with vinyl farmhouse on here and I might just do that I might just do a little bit of cricket there you know got to get that cricket used up right so we might just do that we'll see we'll see how I feel I know this is like long overdue and I'm kind of behind on lots of my Christmas projects guys I can't tell you how far behind I am but I think what I'm gonna do is probably start knocking off a lot of these Christmas projects early on in the year but you guys know I wasn't crafting until about July and then I didn't have a whole lot of craft project uh, supplies so I'm just a little late a little late but that's all right we got it done we're getting it done and it'll be better it shall be better one thing I just read in the Bible today Philippians 4 4 rejoice in the Lord rejoice in the Lord and that's what I will do I'm not gonna worry no burden he cannot handle so this is a fairly quick and easy project actually with the um, exception that I might just go to my Cricut and do a little bit of vinyl cutting that that's probably about it I just probably have to look for to see if I have um, like white vinyl I don't know if I have white vinyl I probably don't I don't think I do I know I have black I know I have red I don't know if I have white we shall see and I get my vinyl from 651 vinyl pretty fast actually like in two days um, they ship my vinyl out and believe it or not I did I have used my little vinyl I use it on the silhouette now I found that I like the Cricut a lot better than the silhouette believe it or not it's a lot quieter um, silhouettes kind of noisy it's loud sounds like a tractor trailer going up a hill pretty loud let's get this little heat gun going no matter how much I say I'm not gonna make a mess I always seem to make a mess Probably gonna have to give it like a couple quotes because of that Christmas thing there. Yeah, that should be alright. We should be alright.
Yeah, I know. It's red, and it should be red for Christmas, but I'm not a fan of a lot of red. And I know the kids want more of a traditional Christmas. I am just not dig. I was not digging that red. And it was the only block um, that I found that I liked. And I went to the wood section to see if I found the blocks that I used before, but they didn't have any, so I didn't feel like driving far. So it was this. This was what we had to deal with. It's like take it or leave it, May. So we had to take it. Can you believe it? It's only um, 13 days before Christmas. I can't believe it. I really can't. Can't believe it. Seriously cannot believe it. Hard to believe this year is almost over. And I'm honestly can't, I cannot wait until 2020. Because I know God has some amazing things for us all. Okay, let's nuke it up a little bit more so I can paint the back and the bottom. And guys, if you guys want to be a part of our Bible journaling group, please let me know. Send me a message. Comment below if you're interested in joining. We would love to have you and, you know, see see if you have any inputs to help us grow as um, Christian women. Also men. We're welcoming men as well because, you know, men are Christian as well. So um, if you're interested in joining let us know i would uh, love to have you come on board and you know share some inputs that you might have some bible verses some journaling i'm fairly new to it all um so it's kind of fun to sit down and just enjoy god enjoy that time you have with god you know i got up this morning and um of course I read Philippians 4 and I'm loving the little cards that I got from Amazon those are really helpful it kind of gives me something um, motivational inspirational to look forward in my day and I am loving it being able to pick up a, a certain passage or, or scripture from the from the Bible to read and I generally when I see that I, I'll read um, one or two chapters just to get more of an insight of what led to that particular scripture or verse. I don't know if you guys do the same thing. Like sometimes you'll have a, a scripture and you're like, okay, how did it come to, how, how did that come? You know, how did you come up with, with that scripture or what led to that scripture i guess is what i'm trying to say i'm not it's kind of early it's like 5:58 in the morning i'm sure some of you guys are up already and doing your daily routines and i decided to come in here and get this knocked out before i start my day here in about 40 minutes to get the kids ready for school I haven't had my coffee, believe it or not. I am trying to slow down on my coffee. Okay. I noticed that I don't know if you guys have that same experience um, whenever I drink coffee and maybe it's because I've been drinking like way more than I should be I mean I was 
to the point, you know, eight or nine cups. It was just so good. Coffee is just so, so good. Um, but my stomach would get really, really inflamed. And last night I had just one of those fits that I had to lay down had to lay down. I have been taking some of the Moringa, so I will have to keep you in um, what do you call it? Let you know how I do with the Moringa. Shadi got me into the Moringa and I've been taking it for the last couple days. Um, I started it and I forgot that I needed to do it every day. She reminded, she told me, you got to take it every day. You can't stop. And me, I'm forgetful about medications. I am. Um, I forgot and I felt the pain in my bones. And then I, you know, been doing it consistently in the last couple of days. I've been taking it. Um, and I'm excited because I ordered a Christian planner Bible. It's a, it's a Christian planner. So that, that way I can put a little note there. Take the Moringa. Make sure you take the Moringa. Make sure you take your iron pills, you know. Make sure you do all that because when I have my iron deficiency, when it's down, I, I get really, really exhausted. And it's like no matter how much sleep I get, I'm exhausted. And I do try to push along the, you know, along the way. I try not to let it get to me. Um, Try to think positive, positive thoughts, positive thoughts. Right? Alright, so there's that. May have to do a little bit more here, just a little smaller thickness because I can see Christmas. You know, days of Christmas. And I just don't want to make it just for Christmas. It's an all year round thing. So yeah, I will have to let you guys know how the Moringa goes for me. Um, Shadi's doing really well with it, so she suggested it because she knows that I have arthritis in my hands. And here lately, my knees has had a knee injury, and I've been feeling it um, a lot more lately than before. think where I want to put the farmhouse here I will keep the numbers um, the same because there's nothing wrong with these numbers there's nothing absolutely wrong with that kind of gives it a nice little color pop a little difference there right like I said it wasn't going to be anything fancy smancy I am going to paint this one I'm going to pick this up at a thrift store. I think I paid like 25 cents. It wasn't a whole lot. But it's pretty heavy. The thing is heavy, heavy metal. Could have painted it gold, but now, again, I don't. I want to keep things that I can use all year round because you know, constantly redoing a lot of the decors for all the holidays. Although, to be honest, I can live with my Christmas decor all year round. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but. Ugh. I just love Christmas decors. It's my favorite time of the year. And this year, of course, like I said, we're doing more of the traditional because that's what the kids wanted. And I got rid of all my Christmas stuff last year. Mm. I'm going to probably cut that little thingy off, snap it off with the wire cutters here. So 
it's not in the way. I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to go to the Cricut. I'm going to see if I can find a font or something that I can type in very small for this and then we'll be back for that, okay? All right, so I decided black was too plain for me and I took some of the Hazelnut Waverly Matte Finish Chalk Paint. I brushed, dry brushed it on and now I'm going to go in with the antique wax from the Waverly brand and I'm just going to dry brush again just to give it a nice rusty feel to it I just kind of thought that the black was just too too much too much black I didn't want to look gothic or anything like that just want to give it a almost like a rusty look to it without actually making it rusty if you kind of understand what I'm trying to get at just too I looked at it and I'm like wow that really looks like it's gothic it doesn't look like something that belongs in my kitchen and I say my kitchen because that's normally where we aside from the living room it's it's open we have an open concept so I can see everything from the kitchen <laughs> Okay, yeah, I like that better. I like that a whole lot better. It looks rusty, grungy. It looks like it's meant to be in my kitchen. Not. And some morgue or some, you know. Nothing wrong with that, but not my taste. Not my taste. So having the black kind of helped with this look to make it look more rusty. black as an under layer. See, I'm liking it, liking it. You know, and if we don't, we can always change the color. That's the neat thing about having paint is that we can always change the color. We don't always have to stick to that particular color if we don't like it. Okay, and I am digging it, digging it. Oh yeah, that's more me. Now it looks rusty, see? When in doubt, just go. what you like the most and although the inside's not going to be neat seen because I am going to put that glue down now I changed my mind about the vinyl hopefully my next option is going to be just as doable I'm noticing I'm just going in at crazy brush strokes I want it to look like it's rusty 
and like a faux finish on it. So I kind of like that look a lot better than the look of, it makes it look rusty, than the black look. So that is what we're going to go with for the base on this piece. Now, put that in my thing. I should have had my little towel here, but I don't. So let's grab some of these little wipes that I hands okay so what we're going to do is um, chalk couture stenciling hopefully it'll work it should work if it doesn't we'll go with the vinyl right no worries all right so we're going to use the white chalk paste from chalk couture and Young Sue had gifted me this little piece here. Let's fold this over so it's not completely in our way. Um, and so what I'm going to do is, I think, I think, I think, I think, since I love ch chickens and roosters and all that nice stuff, and I've already made one of these for my kitchen. She sent me two. one's already sitting there I thought what if we use this as the back of our little calendar not that but this if I took and glued it in like so wouldn't that be cool I think so I think it'd be awesome so that's what we're gonna do I love the idea so I have these little chalk couture stencils or transfers actually as they like to call it we're gonna go with one of these I'll pick one that'll be suitable you can tell you can tell which ones I've used probably use farm fresh milk milk I think I used eggs for the one in the kitchen that I already have up I wish they had a small little... Hmm. The farm. Wouldn't it be nice if I could fit that one in? I would love that one. Might have to go with eggs. I'm not sure. Not sure, not sure. Farm is too big. Fresh. Because i got to keep in mind that we're going to be gluing some of it on here I'm probably going to go with eggs maybe oh let's do fresh no oh, I think eggs looks better I don't know let me get my little mat get my little spatulas to move things around these projects are always meant to be really quick and easy and I always make them really long and complicating so it should be looking like yogurt it's good to always stir that in And if it doesn't look like yogurt, then just take a little bit of um, distilled water and just spray it in. Kind of get those edges in there. I'm going to spray it a little bit. Okay. All right. 
surface. I have my little mat here. My little fuzzy mat, that is. Let's see, do I want that? Fresh, do I want eggs? I think we're going to go with eggs. Put out my fuzzy, 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 wuzzy. And hopefully I get it perfectly aligned. I don't know. I never know if I got it aligned right. I should count, I should, what I should be doing is cutting it a little bit shorter so that I know where the alignments are. Hopefully that should do it. If it's not, oh well. It is washable, wipeable. So I'm a little bit closer on this side. See, that's what I'm trying to avoid. Is and you know what? Maybe I should cut it. Hold on, hold on, because I'm struggling here to align this, and I really shouldn't be struggling that much. I'm just gonna trim it. Just trim it so that I can see it a little bit better. Up closer here, maybe. And a bit here closer. And I'm going to trim some of the top. Well, we'll leave the top. Top is not so much. Alright. Now we're going to try it. I need to make sure that is okay. Yeah, that's better. Okay, much better. Get all my air bubbles out. And let's go to town. Start from the outside in. And you really want to keep it all in one direction. But these transfers really make it so you're not making the bleeds. It prevents those awful bleeds that we get with I wish all companies made them like this even the craft companies if they just made can you guys hear me you in the craft world you in the scrapbooking mixed media world can you make all the stencils this way so that we don't have to struggle all right let's pull that out Voila, isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. Let's spray this. And that's just distilled water. I'm going to run it to the sink.
heat set it. Just to dry it up a little bit. You don't have to. But there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. And that's going to be glued on just like so. And I think it's going to be lovely. Now I can have it all year round. Okay, so I'm going to go and get my kids ready for school. And I'll be back to finish this video. Cricut going. So I am using it. And I decided to add something down here because it's kind of like a dead space. And also down here. And I have my um, designs cutting here on Cricut. Now the neat thing about Cricut is that if you pay a $9.99 monthly fee, you have access to their library. So I've picked out some neat little designs that they have there. And of course I could have designed it um, myself, but hey, if, if it's out there and I'm already paying a fee, why not use it, right? So it's doing its little thing here. I have a transfer that I'm going to use. Now this one I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I do have one that's an 18 by 20 that I got from um, Amazon. But since I already started this the other day, I used it for Carla's um, Christmas gift that she was making. Why not continue to use that roll before I move on? So I'm kind of liking this. This machine is very quiet as opposed to the silhouette. The silhouette sounds like a tractor trailer going up a hill that's about to give up. And um, y'all know I'm not much of a electronic machine kind of user. I find them kind of intimidating. But the Cricut is fairly fairly user friendly um, and I'm digging this I really am so we're gonna let this thing here do its job and we'll be back once it's done I will do the weeding and all that and then we'll put the transfer on. okay so we have it all printed out and I know some of these are a little bit too big for the area. I have to weed out some things that, like this here. So I don't want my transfer to pick up. decide which of these is going to fit. So I'm going to try a couple. They, they might not all fit in my little space and I'm not going to do all this stuff but you guys kind of get the idea of where I'm going with this. Hopefully my head's not on the camera here. I think the weeding is the most tedious part of all, if I may say so. And now you can weed when you have your transfer pulled out, but put that right there for a minute. <clears throat> just a little bit, just a little bit more difficult to do it that way. <clears throat> now we'll be cutting it down down a bit. So I might be using this <clears throat> for the bottom of my... I know I'm going to use this on another project. I thought about using it on the side of that, but I think there's another one that I want to use. Not quite sure. This one here is going to be just a tad bit too big for the bottom of my calendar piece there. But I had originally wanted something like this on the side of it. 
I just think that it might be too big. Let's go ahead and weed it just in case. I don't know. You just never know. I'll weed it just in case. These little intricate pieces are just so tiny. Dear gosh, gosh, goshy. would have thought that cutting something this tiny would be a piece of work, but it is, guys. It really is. Such an intricate little cut that that machine makes. Imagine that. How tiny of a cut it makes. Okay, so I got that weeded out. I have this weeded out. I am going to be using that, but for now, just to get this project done and over with, gosh, I'm just going to size what I'm going to use as far as this transfer adhesive. And then, uh, just as an FYI, Dollar Tree also has these for a dollar if you can find it at your local Dollar Tree. My Dollar Tree does not have it, but you can order it online too if you don't mind ordering like a case box of it. I think that's how they do it. I'm going to try on this one, and I'm just cutting out exactly what I need so I'm not wasting this contact, this contact stuff. Just a tad bit. I'm having a hard time here. Okay, 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 there we go. Now that I have it weeded and hopefully I cut enough, see I cut just a tad, oops, don't want to do that, don't do that, don't, don't, don't. Cut too much of it. You can see I did. That little extra there could have been used for something else, but that's all right. <coughs> <clears throat> Burnish it in. And I know I should have lifted it up for my mat, but I really want to first get my contact before I do that. should lift it up from your mat. <coughs> Let's see, what else do I have that I can use? This little tiny one. That's too big for that one. We'll use it on this one. And then I will cut it out. So I've added the little swirl at the bottom of my frame and I think it looks really stinking adorable. What I did is I ended up cutting, since the paper comes with little grid lines, you can cut them to size. And so that's what I ended up doing and here's my little pieces that I ended up cutting now. For this here, now I was thinking of distressing this a little more because I had taken the frame and I painted it up a little bit different. So what we're going to do before I move to this process is I like that look of this. I made it look rusty. And I think I like that look to follow through with the whole shenanigan thing. So we're going to do it. I'm going to show you how I did that. Get my 
little wax paper so we can paint on that and not on my desk. I have to move all this and I know I got my machine there. Um, let's cover it up just a tad bit just in case. I don't want it to get any paints on it. <clears throat> So I use the Waverly Black Chalk Paint as the base and I am going to use the Waverly, oops, I'm dropping, that's one thing I don't like about these headfo headphones, just get on my way, just get in my way. Alright, so I'm going to use, first what I did is I took the hazelnut from the Waverly Chalk Paint brand and let's shake that up a little everything drops when you're with these headsets because I'm limited to where I'm moving you probably think I have such a mess in my house because you see this <clears throat> bottle looking all messy but I don't I don't have a messy house I promise you that I do like that almost like a dry brush and I just want to go with a little bit more of a rustic look because I like the rusty look um, goes more with my home decor. There's a farm, a rusty look in my home. Okay. I guess I should be going in one direction and not 20 million directions, right? expose some of the black and if you get too much you can just grab a little baby wipe and just wipe it down just a tad bit to bring back some of the black that you want exposed and the idea is that I'm going to make it as rustic as I can so that I can use this for the entire year instead of for specific seasons. I'm not much, to be honest, I'm not much of a season kind of a person. I <clears throat> don't normally like to decorate for seasons except for Christmas. It's the only season or only holiday actually um, that I will normally typically decorate for and this year we kind of did Halloween because my daughter wanted Halloween, but I don't normally typically go for holidays or seasons unless it's Christmas. So as you can see, I'm exposing some of the black. No, I'm off camera. It would be nice if I was on camera, right guys? If you guys were here, you guys would probably be shouting at me. And I could just hear you all the way over here. Move to the camera, woman. And I can, just from the comfort of your home, I can hear you. I can hear you saying, May, get to the camera, woman. Okay. And if you go back to the areas that you've already painted. It also gives it more of a distressed look because it's one layer, so there's one layer and watch how that another layer just kind of adds more texture to it. So 
see for instance see how this one is looks kind of blah go back in with another little layer and just dry brush it and it just gives it another unique dry brush look that is to die for and I like it dry it on the side I'll probably go in with a little bit of a sealant just to seal it a little bit and give it more of a polished look instead of a matte look. Kind of like, I don't like too much of a matte look to be honest. putting my finger on there. Let me get my heat gun. And I have my child number one coming in to say hello to her mother, dear. Say hello to your mother. Greetings and salutations. Kids are funny guys. They really are. You gotta go do your schoolwork like a good student. She's working on her degree. She's such a good student. three college students. Three. Can you imagine that? Three in the next year. Oh, how joyful that is. joy, the joy, the joy. But I'm sure many of you guys already know that feeling. See, the more you go back in, you just pick up different layers, and you add more textures to those layers, and it just gives it a nice little different look to it. All right, do the side. All right, I'm going to do this. And then I'll come back and I'll do the other layer and I'll show you how to put the other one. So you're not looking at me like I am insane for keeping you on this long. And then the last thing that we're going to do is, is um, well not the last thing, the second to the last thing is we will do um, a little glossy finish or seal it to it. 
Alright, so we're done with the hazelnut. We're now on to the antiquing wax. I'm using the same brush. Blot it down. You see, it gives it kind of like a dirty, grungy look. Expose the two layers underneath without affecting the top layer. much you can always come back with your um, baby wipe and wipe off what you don't want and I'm just going for like a rusty a rusty feel to it You can take a sponge and you can give it a little bit of a textured faux look to it as well while it's a little bit damp or wet. crazy there. a nice little faux rusty look exposing some of the black some of the hazelnut underneath and just kind of giving it a nice little look there Everything it's got done. Everything has to get done. Okay, so that's that one. And we'll do the sides. Oops, too much. Too much, too much. I'll just give you what 
you can take the sponge, kind of get a nice little, see that? It gives it a nice little rusty look there as well. A faux, nice little faux finish. I like that little finish. And you want to do that while it's kind of wet. So let's dry that one up. And I just take really cheap, affordable Dollar Tree sponges. You don't want anything just really super duper expensive. You just want like a cheap, inexpensive Dollar Tree sponge. One thing I have noticed about the Waverly chalk paint that is it does take a little bit longer to dry out, so you have to have some form of patience with it. Because it does take a bit longer. But it's highly affordable. Except for the bigger bottles, like I would strongly suggest you get the small ones for $1.67 at Walmart. It's not too bad. Um, if you're going to go for big bottles, I would say hit Joann's because, let's face it, if you're going to get the same size bottle that Joann has, then it's a lot more affordable if you just went to Joann's and got their their bottle because then you can use your 40%. give it kind of a nice faux finish while it's wet. on the wall. I would love to do that. I just don't have that kind of uh, patience. I once did it on a wall, a faux finish on a wall in a farmhouse my mom had. Um, honestly, I really like my hat goes off to like Shoddy who's got the patience of an angel to do work like this. That woman, she even installs floors. It's like, I wish I could do that. I need to work on my floors. I really do. Just know I need to do it. a very brilliant May, eh? but I like the look on it. Hmm. I'm just going to hitting it right where it was dried before to bring out more textures to make it look really rusty. Like rust metal.
I don't know why I like to make sure my edges are really nice and clean. I don't like messy work. That's just for sure. Take this little top piece off because it's kind of getting in my way. I would say that because it's also good for texture. Heat it up. Right, I'm going to do that the entire, I'm going to do it to the back and I'm going to do it to the bottom and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to attach the font to it. So here we go. There's the sign and you can see all the little details that makes it look like it's rusty metal along. Now the base, the candlestick is rusty metal or not rusty metal, it is metal that I made it look into rusty metal and I've sealed it with the Mod Podge. I kind of diluted the Mod Podge just a little bit so it's not so thick and I wiped it down on my little thing and I attached a little chalkboard that young Sue gifted me. It went really well with this. Now the last thing that I want to do is I have my little font that I've printed out or cut out from my Cricut and it's on the vinyl transfer. I'm going to peel this back as best as I can and I weeded out all that I needed to weed out. Get all those little letters in there. It's such tiny little letters that it's you got to take your time with the peeling of the vinyl, but it's doable if you take your time. Now, if I can do it, I know you all can definitely do it. So, give it a try, guys. You'll be surprised what you can create with vinyl. So then you're left with the transfer and the letters looking like that because I weeded them out already. And so I'm just going to try to eyeball this as best as I can onto this piece. Hopefully I don't go crooked. Well, it looks about right. I'm going to go ahead and kind of burnish that as best as I can peel back the transfer or the contact paper actually 
And there we go. And voila. There's a nice little got a little bit of a contact on there. it up one more time. Isn't that beautiful, guys? Absolutely gorgeous. So can you imagine what you can do? It's $5 for my little box, the vinyl. The candlestick was $0.25. Cents. And of course, this piece was gifted to me by Young Sue. So thank you, Young Sue. And then I'm going to have a awesome, we have how many days left to Christmas? 13 days to Christmas. So let's look for the number three. That way, I don't have to go and buy these every holiday out there. And there you have a beautiful little farmhouse decor. The box looks like it's made out of metal, but it's not. And I can have this all year round in my kitchen, and you will never know that it was originally a calendar for Christmas. So I hope this inspired you guys to create one. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, share my video, and if you uh, hit on the little bell on the right hand side, it will notify you whenever I go live or whenever I upload a video. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, guys, God bless. Bye-bye.